Ladies and gentlemen, the New York probe into Trump's hush money payments. Everything is so dramatic. Hush money payments. Uh, That's ended. It's pretty much ended. The grand jury is going to be disbanded. It's been canceled, obviously, this past week. And they found nothing. They were about, I think they were about to indict and arrest him. And they still might. Uh, They still might in Georgia. However, I think what took place is they were about to arrest and indict Trump. Then Jim Jordan and James Comer, and I explained the segment prior to this one, Stormy Daniels will testify before Congress. They're going to ask her, did she have any contact with Democrats to try and set up and frame Trump? They're going to ask her under oath in Congress if any Democrat worked any intermediary, public relations executive, attorney, anyone, staffer, Hollywood director, producer, book, um, book deal, anyone associated with her 800 grand book deal, they're going to say, did anybody working alongside or with the Democratic Party or having contact with the Democratic Party or getting paid by the Democratic Party in any way? So if she was contacted by a staffer, Maybe not Adam Schiff, maybe not Eric Swalwell, maybe not uh, Nancy Pelosi, maybe not Nadler or Schumer. But if, if one of their staffers contacted Stormy Daniels, that's she would be committing perjury if she said no, no staffer did. Um, they don't. They're not going to just give her a check for you know eight hundred thousand dollars. They'll say, well, there's a book deal for you. Play ball with us. Help us get Trump. You'll, you'll get a book deal. Did any Democrat promise a book deal? Did any Democrat uh, staffer or congressman or congresswoman or anyone at the, at the DNC tell Michael Avenatti when he was speaking at the DNC, by the way, that she would be compensated with a book deal or with a Jimmy Kimmel appearance or whatever? So there are a million questions that the... Uh, that that James Comer and Jim Jordan can ask um, Stormy via congressional testimony. It's obviously not a crime. Like what Hunter, just Hunter's photos. A lot of those photos are crimes, okay? But the laptop, there's criminal activity with financial crimes, but also with other types of crimes. Okay, no indictment yet, but no indictment. They're still looking into it. Hillary had servers running top-secret intel outside the U.S. government. No indictment. No reasonable prosecutor. I think Hillary Clinton will be the 24 nominee. I really do. I think that she will, she'll be, she's like a, a Sherman tank just running through, like, you know, a, a, a house, like, a, like a, a stucco wall, okay? I don't think there's anything stopping Hillary Clinton in 24. I think all of this, there's a bigger picture, okay? The bigger picture is that how do we make everything so morally relative that, you know what, independents will will flock to Hillary Clinton in 24? How do we make everything so morally relative? And honestly, if she gets Georgia and Arizona, then she could be president. But nobody believes this or even listens to this. But my point is, New York... Did not invest the Clinton did not, did not investigate maybe for a second the Clinton Foundation. Uranium One, big huge scandal. Hunter, Joe, those those are serious financial crimes there that Chuck uh, Chuck Grassley and others. Oh, classified data siphoned onto Clinton's servers. Nobody knows how that happened. That's a criminal act. It's also a national security issue, major national security issue. But. Then you have Hunter and Joe and 150 banking transactions. Where's Trump's lost laptop with incriminating data that the New York Post, you know, publishes with serious felonies? Oh, oh, there is none. Oh, there's just a hush money payment from 50 years ago, with which was totally legal. And the FEC didn't even view it to be a fine. Oh, okay. And where's, where are his private servers? Oh, that's right. Trump doesn't have private servers. Those are Democrats, inadvertently. Okay, so the point is, he's not the one committing crimes, but he's the one being investigated. They're the ones committing crimes, and their investigations happen kind of, sort of, and then nothing happens. And then media says Trump is the embodiment of criminality. Oh, he's a narcissist. These people utilize, they wield 
power and influence and media and they distort the truth as they pontificate about the truth and they lie about, they cheat Bernie Sanders and they say the fact that you knew from the DNC emails, the fact that you knew about Bernie being cheated is a plot by the Russian government. I mean, they come up with the stupidest reasons for their criminality and corruption, but people just buy it because they want to believe it. People will believe anything they want to believe. It's a religion now. Being a Democrat is a religion. There are numerous like YouTubers that have a million plus subs. Their religion is Democrat. They would never not ever not vote Democrat. Okay, now they're kind of like a couple of them are like, oh, I'm, I have voted Republican once. And you never, they've never voted. I never voted Republican my whole life until Trump. Okay, and then I was the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet before that, according to the Huffington Post. And the unofficial scribe of Sanders was the most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. To read my writing and hit subscribe to this channel, go to hagoodman.com. To read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, and other publications, go to hagoodman.com. My Patreon is below. Thank you to my new Patreons. Thank you. Uh, the super thanks is below next to the like and the share buttons. But New York ended its probe because they don't want Michael Cohen before Congress again being asked specific questions by Jim Jordan and James Comer. They don't want... Uh, oh, he was $22 million in debt. I mean, he was he's a, he was a convicted felon, $22 million in debt, has taxi medallions that went from like a million to $200,000. And he was, didn't pay millions upon millions in IRS, in taxes. So you don't pay millions upon millions in taxes, well, then you're going to go to prison. And so then you go after Trump. Oh, okay, you have a motive. Not saying that Trump didn't pay Stormy, almost certainly had the romantic relationship and paid through Michael Cohen, but Cohen is on record as saying he paid on his own and had nothing to do with Trump. He wrote a letter that the New York Post published and Stormy denied it numerous times. Then the FEC didn't even view it because the FEC law is if it is a... If it is a personal expenditure, there is no problem. There is no problem if it's a personal expenditure. And all he had to prove for it to be a personal expenditure, all he had to prove for it to be a personal expenditure is that he didn't want his wife to find out. And that's not even an issue. Okay? That's not even an issue. So you have a situation where, like, of course he didn't want his wife to find out. Of course that's why, of course that's why he, um, you know, that's why he paid the money. But again, it's not a crime. This isn't like Hunter meeting and getting like, giving 10% of all the ill-gotten gains to Joe, Joe lying to the American people, New York Post being s censored, Hillary with private servers. I mean, Bill Clinton committed perjury. Uh, don't bring me up. Don't use my name in vain. I mean, this is like, I I'm looking at here all these articles. It's like, <laughs> the obsession with Trump is so unhealthy. It's such an unhealthy, sad, pathetic obsession. We had record low poverty with Trump. We had a record low poverty with Trump. We had the Doha Agreement, Abraham Accords, peace between the beginning of or detente or at least a meeting in North Korea. First president to do so. If Hillary Clinton had done so as president, my God, she'd be added to Mount Rushmore by Democrats. But nobody cares about actual policies. It's objectively worse now. Like life is objectively worse in Biden's America. The economy stinks. There are new bank runs. There's more major banks now on the verge of failing. And those are international banks, by the way. <laughs> so don't bring up Dodd-Frank. You just... Dodd-Frank has nothing to do with shutting down the economy, then pumping trillions, then uh, pretending inflation doesn't exist, and then seeing banks suffer. That's all linked to democratic policies or liberal democratic policies throughout the world. You shut down economic activity. You pump trillions in central banks. What do you think is going to happen to the currency and to inflation? It'll go skyrocket. The currency will be worth less, but inflation will skyrocket. Anyway, the New York probe is pretty much done. 
It's pretty much ended. And they're just off to Georgia now. That's the... <laughs> what's that song? Back to Georgia? And that, that going back to Georgia now. On the midnight train. And so... They're now the only thing they have is pro- try to trying to indict him on yet another phone conversation. That ain't that's not gonna work. So they're just gonna have to actually face him in twenty four. Uh, and like I said, if he if Trump doesn't make peace with the Georgia and Arizona Republican parties, he should give them all like free membership to Mar-a-Lago, like lifetime memberships. If he doesn't make peace with them, Hillary Clinton will be the next president of the United States of America. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe to this channel, right?